Thank you, everyone, and shalom from Sao Paulo. Uh, behind me is the city, but if I open the curtains, you won't be able to see me. So I guess this time, after Rio de Janeiro, I prefer that we talk more about the situation rather than about the uh, place itself. Rio de Janeiro was amazing. We came back to Campinas and now in uh, Sao Paulo. I'm literally one hour before uh, heading to the airport. And um, it has been a wonderful, groundbreaking tour. And if you haven't re uh, received the newsletter that we just sent about uh, a few minutes ago, then you really want to because we specified all the things that happened here. It was just amazing. But we want to talk about what is going on in northern Syria. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but in the last day or so, there are less and less reports and there is less and less commotion. And we, you can clearly see that the dust is settling and uh, the uh, propaganda and all the fake news about the things that are happening there are now coming to the right proportion. First of all, let me explain the chain of events so you understand. Um, it was uh, about October 6th, if I'm not mistaken, that President Trump had a phone call with President Erdogan. I am not a big fan of Erdogan. I actually think that Erdogan is evil. I think that Erdogan is vicious. I think that Erdogan is a, almost, almost a type of a, the Antichrist. I, I don't think he is, but I think he is that bad, that evil. So by no means I'm going to be here and justifying anything this man is doing. But I will tell you that he did speak to President Trump and made sure that the American president understand that Turkey is about to open a military operation to clean the northern border. You know, Turkey has 450 kilometers border with Syria, but the problem that it has is 100 kilometers just about east of the Euphrates on the northern part in the border. There are several places uh, such as Ras Al Ain, Tel Tamar, Tel Abia, uh, Tel Abid, excuse me, Kubani, and east and west of the river there is Kuba, uh, Manjib um, uh, itself. And uh, these are all places that um, the Turks uh, um, have a, a lot of problem with because um, that which is known as the Syrian Democratic Army is actually comprised of many of the PKK, the, Turkey, the, uh, uh, the, the Kurdish underground, which is uh, considered a terrorist organization, um, also by, not only by the Turks, but also by the United States and by the EU. So make no mistake, we are talking about a Turkish uh, intention to clean their uh, uh, border and on the Syrian side from terrorist element uh, as far as they are concerned. Make no mistake that the PKK over the last years killed over 40,000 civilians among them. We're talking million, uh, you know, children and women. The, as President Trump said, we're not talking about angels here. But I do want to tell you that um, President Trump um, did not give any green light to anyone. He basically understood that a military operation is about to undergo. And what he said to uh, President Erdogan is the following thing. Well, I'm not going to stand on the way and risk my 50 American special forces that are right there in that exact region. I will move. But if you anyway go in, I expect you two things. One, don't even think about kill the Kurds as an ethnic cleanse. But you, you, you're more than welcome to fight against terrorists and kill the terrorists. But if you are the one that is going to go in, we will glad you let you, gladly let you take care of ISIS because we may have destroyed ISIS, but we captured 5,000 of, of ISIS uh, fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about 5,000 actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, 5,000 um, operates... Uh, uh, operatives that are um, from Syria and then we are talking about another thousand 
from European countries, from 44 different countries, among them Europe, Western Europe, and none of them, France, Britain, Germany, don't want them back. So President Trump says, Erdogan, if you go in and you expect me to let you fight the terrorists, I expect you to take control now of these captured ISIS terrorists. That's all. And so he released a statement on October 6th, if I'm not mistaken, and in that statement, President Trump did not give any green light to anyone. He basically said the following thing. They, 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 they said that Turkey will soon be moving forward with its long planned operation into northern Syria. The United States armed forces will not support or be even involved in this operation. And the United States forces, having defeated the ISIS territorial caliphate, will no longer be in the immediate area. The United States government has pressed France, Germany, and other European nations from which many captured ISIS fighters came to take them back. But they did not want them and refused. The United States will not hold them for what could be many years and great cost to the United States taxpayer. Turkey will now be responsible for all ISIS fighters in the area captured over the past two years in the wake of the defeat of the territorial caliphate by the United States. So we are now talking about a very clear thing. Turkey received from America not green light to kill anyone, but the mandate to actually be now the guardian of the captured ISIS terrorists. That's it. This is the only thing that Trump actually gave green light to. Now, when Erdogan announced um, the uh, uh, spring of peace uh, operation and he started going full force and President Trump realized that this is probably going to be a Turkish uh, uh, interpretation of uh, the American uh, um, press release and that is not going to be really good, then he wrote Erdogan a letter. In the letter he said, Mr. President, he wasn't really nice to Erdogan, he said, Mr. President, let's work on a good deal. You don't want to be responsible for slaughtering thousands of people and I don't want to be responsible for destroying the Turkish economy and I will. Look, he told him, I will. I've already given you a little sample with respect to Pastor Brunson. Wow. And then he said, I have worked hard to solve some of your problems. Don't let the world down. You can make a great deal. Now, what deal is he talking about? The deal is this. You want the Kurdish PKK not to operate against you on that border. The general that is actually now heading the, Tur the Kurdish forces is uh, General uh, Maslum. He is willing to negotiate with you and he will is willing to make concessions that they would never have made in the past. I'm confident, I'm confidentially enclosing a copy of his letter to me just received. History will look upon you favorably if you get this done the right and humane way. It will look upon you forever as the, e the devil if good things don't happen. Don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool. And I will call you later. <laughs> this, you understand what I just said. When President Trump realized that President Erdogan is about to show the Turkish people that he is killing hundreds of Kurds and to show the Kurds that he's not afraid of them. And he started bombing from the air different places and the gruesome pictures started coming out. Then, you know, it was evident that America will have to do something about it. Now, President Trump only moved 50 soldiers from the path of the Syrian invasion, but he is not making any secrets in the in, in his intentions. He wants to move a thousand US soldiers from Syria back home. He said, look, we have no reason to stay there. Now, I'd like to tell you something. America did not leave Syria. It's a big lie. The American forces are still there. In fact, they are still controlling most of um, 
of eastern Syria where the gas and the oil is and, and they're still collaborating with the Kurds there. But I want you to know that the Kurds themselves are not united. They are not one entity. They are divided to different factions and different groups. And each and every one of them is actually showing loyalty to someone else. Those next to the oil, they are loyal to America, but those that are in the north are actually loyal to Iran, loyal. Some of them collaborate with ISIS. Folks, make no mistake, the PKK is a terrorist organization just as ISIS is. It may not have graphic videos like ISIS, but it has killed thousands of people. And make no mistake, um, I can give you many, many uh, 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 testimonies of people such as the um, um, such as uh, the Arameans, Arameans, the Syrians, those um, Christians that live in that area that were suffered greatly by the Kurds. Don't forget that many of the Kurds uh, adopted Sharia law and their women and daughters are suffering from, from many of the Sharia law rules on, on females. And don't forget, folks, that in many ways, the Kurds even collaborated with ISIS uh, to some degree. So there are Kurds that are loyal to Iran. Now some of them switch to loyal to Assad. Some of them are still with Americans in the southeast. And some of them are now, um, you know, uh, looking for another sponsor. They, they had a chance a couple times to have their own state in northern Iraq. And they themselves were betraying one another. And therefore they had no state. One of them, Talibani, and the other one, Barazani, both of them worked against each other. And you understand that we're not talking about one group of people. And by the way, when they fought ISIS, they fought ISIS to defend themselves, not to defend America or not to defend the world. And America is the one that, come, that came and helped the Kurds. It's not that the Kurds came to help America. Make no mistake, the Kurds live there. So you cannot blame America for abandoning the Kurds when the Kurds live there and that's who, that's who they fight and that's who they also do business with. Another thing I want you to know is that um, um, the first thing that the Kurds did, they staged a prison break of some ISIS terrorists in order to cause America not to leave that area and to stay there. It didn't really work and uh, President Trump did not change his mind. In fact, we know that uh, Turkey is now coming in and we believe that Turkey is going to recruit some of those ISIS people. Remember, 5,000 of them are Syrian and Iraqis. These are not Europeans. These are not Asians. These are all locals. And Turkey wants to create a Sunni force that will actually stop the expansion of the Shiites and that also that will be a way for Turkey to repopulate that area with Sunnis because that area was cleansed ethnically to some degree by the Kurds when the uh, rebels lost and uh, the Shiites uh, uh, started coming in. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, there are no saints in this area. There are no uh, angels in this area. They all hate one another. They all collaborate with one another. It all depends on when on, uh, the wind blows and where the wind blows towards. And we have to realize that for the last year, few years, you know, hundreds of thousands, more than almost a million people died in Syria. And nobody, nobody criticized uh, anyone there the way they criticize today as if what President Trump is doing right now is the deal breaker of the situation in Syria. Let me tell you that uh, President uh, Trump uh, also never mentioned Israel as the one that should take care of itself. In fact, if ever he pledged to, 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 to stand with someone in the Middle East, is as actually with Israel, and by allowing Israel to to uh, to uh, control the Golan Heights and uh, acknowledging it as an Israeli territory, he basically secured the Israeli northern part as far as not questioning if it's even an Israeli territory. 
But I do want to remind all of you Bible believers. America is not going to help Israel. Not because America is evil. It's because America has to take care of America. And America, the American president told the American people throughout the campaign that he will make America great again. That he will bring back the American troops back home. That he will not be involved in wars that are hundreds if not thousands of years old and, sp and, and spend trillions of US dollars of taxpaying US dollars over there. That's what he said. What he's doing now is actually along what he said and promised before. It has to be clear that you, if, if you come against what President Trump is doing right now, you're basically blaming him for fulfilling his election campaign promises. But I also want to tell you this. I'm, a, I'm not in love with America leaving. I'm actually a, a little bit concerned, but I'm also very realistic. It has to happen if we believe that the Bible is telling us that nobody will stand with Israel when it comes to Ezekiel's war. You understand that the Turkish invasion and the American intention to leave plays perfectly to Bible prophecy. And these are the things you cannot fight. You cannot change. You don't even have to criticize them because they have to happen. It's not an evil thing for a U.S. president to take back 10,000 kilometers uh, uh, away from America, soldiers that are there for no reason, and to bring them back home. It's not a reason to hate him for that. I don't have a problem. If I was an American, I would have supported that, by the way. As an Israeli, I have my own opinion that um, we should take care of ourselves, that we should get ready for whatever is going to come from the north and not trust that other countries are going to help us. And uh, it, it is proved to me throughout what is going on right now that America is willing to use only one weapon, and that's the financial and the uh, uh, economic sanctions weapon. That's all. You know, President Trump made it clear that if uh, Turkey is not going to uh, stop uh, what he's doing and the way they're doing things, uh, it's going to be painful sanctions on the Turkish economy. And I want to remind you that President Erdogan cannot afford to suffer more blows to, to, to his economy because we're talking about already a terrible situation, garbage level um, ratings to their uh, credit. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Turkish lira is, is really, really losing its value. And it's important that we understand that. I also want to tell you that American, pres uh, American troops are still on the ground. Uh, there was an incident yesterday where um, some of the uh, Turkish uh, or Sunni rebels uh, blocked the road and, uh, for the American uh, patrol. And the American uh, patrol stopped and then called uh, two F-16s uh, that flew all the way from Jordan and came and broke the sound barrier and of course those sonic booms um, uh, were there and you know the, the uh, Sunni rebels were not impressed so uh, the American Air Forces was uh, sending two gunship helicopters and they were right above the Syrian uh, patrol and that is when the Syrian decided to change their mind and they left. America has a huge war machine in that area America is not leaving because America lost that war. America is actually uh, the biggest force in northern Syria right now, if, if they want. But America is choosing to leave. America actually destroyed one of the weapons depot, lest it falls into the wrong hands of those rebels. And so, um, you know, they're still there and they're still controlling a big part of eastern Syria. But the intention of the U.S. president, alongside with his uh, promise to his voters is that he will eventually bring those thousand troops back home. For now, about 50 to 60 people just moved away from the uh, path of the Turkish invasion. That's all. But in the near future, I'm not going to be surprised if President Trump will pull them out and fulfill his election campaign promise. 
I also uh, want to uh, tell you that um, we're speaking of um, um, a very uh, fragile situation in uh, uh, other places. Uh, and um, it's interesting because uh, President Trump said, uh, I'm the only person who can fight for the safety of our troops and bring them home from the ridiculous and costly endless wars and be scorned. See, he, look. Not only that, I secure my troops, I bring them back home for all of those, that, and I'm being scorned. Democrats always liked this position until I took it. Democrats always liked walls until I built them. Do you see what is happening here? I want you to know that much of the TV um, footage is actually staged, or much of the TV footage is actually recycled. We already know that some of the things, uh, gun range in uh, Kentucky, I think, uh, footage of that was used as if it's a, it's, it's a Turkish massacre in Syria. There's a lot of fake news, there's a lot of propaganda, there's a lot of internet uh, deception that is going on all around. And you have to understand, you know, they realize it's not working. So in the last 24 hours, you don't see much of that because it doesn't work. I also want to tell you folks that um, um, we are looking into um, um, the situation where um, um, the Europeans are completely paralyzed. President Erdogan is uh, threatening to flood Europe with three and a half million Syrian refugees. He's basically saying, look guys, if you don't let me invade northern Syria and put those millions of Sunnis in northern Syria, then I'm going to just open the doors and they will come into your territory. So Erdogan basically turned the refugees into a weapon. And I'll give you an example. The, uh, the island of Cyprus, which is divided to Turkish and Greek side, and the, the Greek side is opposing Erdogan drilling for oil next to its territory. And so um, what happened is that Erdogan started shipping Sunni refugees from Syria to the Turkish side of Cyprus and they're crossing it to the Greek side of Cyprus so they're officially in the EU. So he's already using that weapon in Cyprus and he will do the same in, uh, in any other country so we can definitely see that again. In Turkey, uh, the, the Turkish uh, morale uh, is down, the Turkish economy is down, the Turkish uh, uh, currency is down, and, and we know something very interesting happened. Take a look at this, folks. Take a look at this. It looked like, it appeared like, Turkey and Iran are in the same alliance. It appeared like um, we see a, a Russian-Turkish-Iranian uh, axis, which is the truth when it comes to Israel and when it comes to Syria. But look what happened right now. When Turkey invaded into northern Syria, they actually are going to block the Iranian expansion and the Shiite uh, road all the way towards uh, the uh, Mediterranean. And the Iranians are not happy. And now all of those Arabs that sided with the axis of Iran and Turkey now have to take sides. Who are you siding with? And so we see that even the Palestinians are now torn between the two. If you are going to come against Turkey, and then of course the Turkish Erdogan will not uh, see you in a great way, and, and he will not help you. If you're going to come against Iran, then the Iranians will not like you. And so you can see that uh, it basically causes many of the Palestinians, at least in Gaza, to just leave through Egypt to Turkey all the way and enter into... Actually, uh, what we see that the, many of them are actually migrating all the way into uh, other places, um, such as uh, um, they go all the way to uh, Greece and Bulgaria and into Germany, Scandinavia and other uh, places. Iran is not happy with what is going on and I want to tell you this. Israel at this point is the biggest uh, uh, winner of the situation. Why? Because now 
Hezbollah is going to be called to help the Shiites in northern Syria. Iranians cannot now focus on Israel, but they have to focus on their problem with ISIS and the Sunni forces over there. And, uh, you know, Israel has nothing to lose here because um, the projectors and the lights are not going to be on, on us anymore. And um, we understand that uh, any Sunni invasion into eastern Syria will actually interrupt more the Iranians than anything else. Erdogan himself, by doing that, is getting weaker and weaker. Although uh, the Europeans don't take harsh actions against him, American sanctions will definitely cripple him. And we know that um, uh, he's going to have to deal with internal problems, even with his own Kurds in his own territory. Europe is, uh, is definitely going crazy with what's going on with them. And the Palestinians are once again losing because they are now being completely uh, uh, um, torn between uh, the Turks that are their allies and the Iranians that are their allies. So they're going to have to lose in both ways. And, um, and I want to tell you this. We often forget, we often forget that it is going to be Rosh, Russia, that is coming. Gog, the Prince of Magog, is going to come all the way. And it doesn't mean that Iran must be the best friend of, of Turkey. It means that at a certain point, Iran, Persia, and Gomer and Togarma, which is Turkey, will actually join Russia. They're not going to be great friends. They're going to join Russia to achieve their goal in two things. One, directing the attention, diverting the attention from their evil doings. And, of course, fulfilling their will and wish to destroy Israel. I want you to know that, you know, it is a, it is an obvious thing that the, the Iranians want to destroy us. Just about a few hours ago, uh, one of the Iranian generals was standing right by the Iranian leader and he said, Soon Tel Aviv will be completely destroyed. He just said that, by the way. Soon Tel Aviv will be completely destroyed. By the way, he cannot say Jerusalem because Jerusalem is holy to the Muslims, so he's mentioning Tel Aviv. But I also want you to know that um, if there is one wish for Erdogan to, to somehow make his sultanate, make his position as the leader of the Sunni world, um, if there is one way for him to do that, he, he knows he cannot invade into Saudi Arabia, but at least he wants to invade into Jerusalem at least what he used to have before when the Ottoman Empire controlled Jerusalem, he wants to restore back to himself. So we can see that as far as the Iranians and the Turks, their wish to somehow destroy Israel and, and use that ground for their own benefits is going to merge with the Russian aspiration to take the Israeli oil and gas. And at some point it's going to happen. America is not going to intervene because America is not going to be there. Europe is going to deal with Europe's problems. And of course, Israel will have to rely on God and God himself. And we know that he is going to help them. So everything that is going on right now, I want to assure you, is uh, part of the script. That's the wonderful thing about students of Bible prophecy. We're not surprised. We're not even uh, disappointed or amazed by anything. Look, when you know the script, when you know who is going to do what and when, why are you disappointed? Why are you surprised? Why are you angry even? You should be smiling because everything is happening in, in, in the way the prophet said it will. Now, listen, I'm not going to try and change the plan of God that he already communicated through the prophets. When God communicated the future, it's not because that's what He wants to happen. It's because that's what He, in His knowing all nature, already knows that is going to happen. God is not telling the Russians, please invade, but God knows that they will. God is not telling the Iranians, I want you to fight Israel, but He knows that they want to. And so God, by His grace, told us through the prophets that those things will happen, whether we want it or not, whether we like it or not, whether we agree with them or not. 
There's no point of being angry with President Trump. There's no po point of being angry with a Turkish invasion into Syria. We know these things are to happen. The question that I always tell people, ask people is, when you know these things that are going to happen, when you see them happening, now my question is, what are you doing? How are you living your life? You know, the, as I always like to quote um, the uh, famous verses of um, Romans chapter 13, um, um, knowing this, the Bible says, knowing this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not reverently and drunkenness, lewdness or lust, not in strife or envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And may, may I even add la one last thought because I just, uh, I just heard the... A couple days ago, I think yesterday I heard that, and that was really, uh, you know, amazing. I heard that there was a Dutch family that was waiting for the end times, and they were in the basement for nine years. The authorities found out about it uh, just because one of their sons managed to go to the local city's pub and ask for help. You see, this is exactly the opposite of what we are to do in the last days. It's not to lock ourselves up and wait for the last days. We are to go out and tell people these are the last days and tell people about Jesus Christ and share the gospel, share the good news, because these are horrible things that we see around us, but there is hope and there are good news. But also, time is running out. And so, <laughs> I want to remind you those things. Uh, the, you know, things are only going to escalate. You know, Iran is blaming Israel and Saudi Arabia and America for hitting their oil tanker. And they, they say we have proofs and they might do something uh, stupid. I don't know what. Um, but I, I just want you to know that uh, things will only escalate. Things will only get uh, uh, worse. And at the same time, where the last thing we need to do is lock ourselves up in a basement and just wait for the end to take place. We are need to occupy until He come. And then the Lord wants to come back and find us doing the Father's business. So I want to encourage you, you know, I think looks a little gloom and doomed and crazy. And you may be disappointed from a president or a politician. I, I just want to remind you. You know, none of the politicians are aware even of the fact that they are actually fulfilling Bible prophecy. And none of them are even aware of the fact that God knows everything that they're about to do. And He already told us through the prophets 2,500 years ago, 2,700 years ago, exactly what's going to happen. We cannot be angry with those things. We need to understand and we need to actually get ready. We need to even be more so active, proactive when it comes to spreading the gospel and telling people about Jesus. You know, it's so easy not to see the full picture and just blame politicians and blame uh, presidents and, and, and um, you know, prime ministers and all of that. I want to tell you, folks, even if Prime Minister Netanyahu is not uh, securing his own government right now, I can tell you one thing. The liberal agenda is taking over Israel already. I can tell you one thing. Eventually, they are going to accept the Antichrist. <laughs> it's, it's going to happen. I cannot stop it. I know that he's going to cut a peace agreement with them. I know that he, he will allow them to build the third temple. Somehow they will be captured in that deception. I can see that happening. So am I going to try and stop him from, from coming? No, I know it's going to happen. I, I can tell people, get ready. Be aware. This is going to happen. 
And so the same thing with what is happening right now. These are just the, the, the you know, first fruits of, of what is going to happen even uh, in a greater scale all around the world. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you things are not falling uh, uh, out of place, but actually into the right place. Um, um, and I want also to remind you all that uh, from us, uh, self-control, perseverance, hope, uh, these are the things that are expected from us and not the opposite, not the um, anger and, 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 and vengeance and, and, and confusion and, and all of that. We are people who know what's going to happen. We, we are people who understand the times and the seasons. And so we need to not to fall asleep as others do, as Paul says, and we need to wake out of sleep for now our salvation, our redemption is nearer. The, not the redemption of our soul, not the salvation of our soul. It's the salvation of our body, the redemption of our body from this world. Now our re redemption is nearer than when we first believed. So it's very important for me to communicate those things to you. There's so much that is going on. You will see things escalating even more so, but don't believe anything or everything that the media is, is, is saying. NBC showed fake news. The Iranian media is, is showing fake news. Um, the liberal media around Europe and even in Israel is, is showing fake news. Look, uh, don't be surprised. This is their hour. This is their time. We need just to pray for a revival at the end, before the very end. We need to pray for more people to open their eyes to see. We need to pray for more people to understand that you know, uh, you know, unborn babies are still human beings and that God created us man and female, male and female. We need to create, pray for, for some common sense to come back to people, but we cannot be surprised when we see what we see. The, 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 the spirit of the Antichrist, the, the, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So these are the signs of the end times. And then Israel is back in the land and Israel is prosperous and secure. And Israel is now one of the strongest countries on planet Earth right now. How can we not see that the fig tree comes back to life and that it, that's it? This is it. We're at the very end. This is the one thing I came to Brazil to, to, to share with the people. So many people here are so confused. They wait for the second coming of Jesus. Folks, how sad it is that the believers around the world really think that Jesus should come back to Earth rather than to meet us in the clouds. How sad it is that they don't understand that if you're still on earth, when Jesus comes back to earth, it's not going to be a good thing for you because he's going to come to judge you. The second coming is to judge, not to save. The first coming was to save. And if you are really truly praying for Jesus to come back, it's not to come back to earth. You want him to come back to the clouds to take you out of here to be with him. That's what you want. And so people are so confused. What is the second coming? And I, I, I tell them it's not <laughs> the second coming of Christ to earth is not for you. It's with you. And this is the hope of the believer to be out of here, not to invite him to be back here. No, trust me, Jesus is not excited to come back here right now. He is more excited to come and take us out of here and to marry uh, the uh, bride in heaven and to be there to give us the crowns and the rewards when we stand before him. That's what he wants to do right now. He wants to find us faithful um, uh, 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 servants. He wants to take us. He wants to be with us. Uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, people said here uh, last night, uh, vain Jesus, which means come Jesus. And I told them, we want also to hear him say vain Jesus. Meo filio. Come, you come, my son or my child. So we want him to come halfway. We want to go up halfway and we want to be with him forever and ever. And wherever he goes, when he comes back, we'll come back with him. That's what we want. Father, I thank you that you are not the author of confusion. Father, I thank you that in you, we find hope, 
we find future, and we know who we are and where we go. I pray now for the thousands of people that are watching us right now, that you will open the eyes of their hearts to understand the wonders of your word and, and that all that is happening right now is part of the script. And we should be encouraged and at the same time motivated to be about your business. We thank you, Father. We bless you for giving us the opportunity to live, to live in these last days, in the last hour of the last days. We bless your name, Father. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai pana v'lecha v'yichuneka Yisa Adonai pana v'lecha v'yasem lecha shalom The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what we pray that the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Peace, will give you now and forever, here and everywhere. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Guys, subscribe to our newsletter, through our website. Follow me on Facebook, Behold Israel, on YouTube, Behold Israel, and on Instagram, Behold Israel, one word. And um, we still have a few uh, spots on our February tour next year to Israel. It's the best time of the year to come. And of course, if you want to take part of the Jerusalem Awaiting His Return conference, um, sign up for our November 2020 tour. If we're still here, it'll be an awesome time of fel fellowship, worship, and study of the Word of God. I love you. God bless you. Shalom and pray for my journey back home. In a few minutes, I'm going to pack and leave. Thank you. I love you. As always, God bless you. And Shalom from Sao Paulo, Brazil.